Dr. Again, Roger, we're taking your calls at one 855 where you can address this issue. Does race matter when it comes to marriage and dating? I think we all are aware that marriage rates are lower than ever in the United States, but African Americans are the most unmarried racial demographic in the U.S. My guest says he knows why black women are single. Ralph Richard Banks is the author of the book, It's Marriage for White People. And Rick, uh, I have read your book, and I thought it was a very courageous effort. Uh, and I'm gonna, so you tell me if I've got your basic thesis correct. And that is that African American women are becoming more successful, more competent, more advanced in their education and training, basically than most black men. And those African American men that are keeping up with them are so few that the marketplace um, basically determines that they don't have to settle down and they can date as many people as they want. Is that about right? That, that's exactly right. I should emphasize, though, that, that the advancement of women is a good thing, right? The problem is really that, that black men are faring so poorly. Uh, and that's true in terms of education, employment, and incarceration. And, and so, okay, so you're blaming education, incarceration, and education as to why black men are being held back. Is that correct? Uh, I want to emphasize, black women are, like, yeah, black women are flourishing, and which is, uh, which is fantastic, but we have our African-American yeah. men sort of not and uh, you know what i gotta tell you rick the one hot button in talking right. to my african-american female friends was when, when you talk about the issue of the men having too many options in the marketplace and by the way not just successful black women but also white women they can date right. they, they don't feel any motivation to settle down yeah that's exactly right and one of the, the goals of the book as well is to show that the what we see with African Americans is actually uh, simply a more extreme form of what we see throughout American society. That's interesting. Uh, so if we want to understand what's happening throughout a society, we can look at the African American experience to, to do that. Okay, we're starting with a call. I have Mikkel here. Mikkel, you wanted to ask Rick or myself a specific question. Go right ahead. Well, um, I'm, I have two daughters. I'm coming from a mommy perspective. And of course I want them to go to college and date, but You've taken away the, the love factor, you know, if their preference is somebody who looks like them, um, they can go, they're, they're islands of men, they're, you know, there's continents of black men, they could, just to, to tell them that to date a blue collar guy is dating someone, is, is somehow a, something downing their, who they are is wrong. Okay. Because if they went to business, yeah, if they went to business school and he, he does tires, they could have a tire franchise or something. Like, so, so I think, you know, yeah, and, and I love. think, where's love in all of this? Rick, what, what do you say to that? So, yeah, where's love in this so equation? Me, Go ahead. So, so, so let me say, so, so love should be at the heart of the relationship, right? I mean, we, we agree to that. Uh, the, the reality, though, for, for your daughters, frankly, is that when they enter their college campus, they will likely find many more black women than black men because twice as many black women as black men graduate college every year. Uh, and that's just the reality nationwide. It's two to one. So what many women do end up doing is they end up marrying men who are much less educated and lower earning than they are. And sometimes those relationships can work out, and that's fine. Uh, but I do want to emphasize that the, the data show that those relationships are actually more likely to have, to have trouble. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Than other relationships. I think you brought and that up in the book. And the, and the, uh, I did. And the, and, and the broader point really is, again, not to tell people what to do, but simply to be aware that uh, relationships across class lines can sometimes confront difficulties. Because people are different. When one person has a graduate degree or a master's degree or a law degree and the other person uh, didn't graduate from high school, say, or barely graduated from high school, that can be a divide between people. And then on the other hand, I do want to alert people that uh, having a relationship with someone of a different race should be seen as a possibility. Uh, and it's a possibility for black women just as it's a possibility for women and men of all other races. There's a whole world of people out there and black women should not feel that they have to confine themselves uh, to the universe of black men. Now, Rick, uh, the tower behind you is the Stanford University clock tower, right? You're a Harvard professor, Harvard law professor, excuse me, a Stanford law professor, right? Okay, that, that's important. I'm yes, you're a Stanford law professor. But I did want to give the shout out to my friends up at Stanford before I go on and bring in the relationship expert, Demetria Lucas. Now, Demetria, he's not saying that there are no available African-American men. He's saying that the numbers, though, 
just favor those guys to be players. It just created the, the marketplace, the market the forces create the players that are out there. Is he right? Well, you can't deny the numbers, Dr. Drew. It, the numbers are what they are. Like when Rick was speaking about the college campuses, yes, they're two to one. You can go on any HBCU college campus and you would see that, you know, it kind of looks a little more not favorable for the female population there. But the numbers definitely don't lie. There are more women who are, who are educated, who are doing um, numbers-wise, financially, better than their African-American male counterparts. All right, let's keep taking calls. I've got Roland in California. What do you got for us, Roland? Hey there, Dr. Drew. Hey, Roland. The bank. Uh, you know, here's what I believe. I do believe that marriage is for everyone, but most blacks have, a, have had a rough start. So initially, when you talk about slavery, men, black men were taken away from the family. Then, you talk about the 1960s, the Welfare Reform Act, where the men were allowed, you know, were not allowed in the house. Now, as Professor Banks said, I do agree with him where he says that education and our incarceration is a problem. So now, do you believe that loyalty and history plays a problem in this? Okay, and Roland, I'm gonna I'm gonna just paraphrase that. Uh, I think, uh, and I will throw it first to uh, Professor Banks about whether history played a role in this, and then to Demetria, what about our families these men are coming from? Professor Banks, right ahead. So, so so, so let me just say that the marriage decline has, has many components, uh, but one of the key facts is that through the middle of the 20th century, marriage rates were, were pretty comparable for blacks and whites. Uh, black women were as likely as white women to be married in 1950. Then there was something that happened uh, in the latter half of the 20th century, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, that resulted in marriage declining across the board, but de declining the most uh, for African Americans. And part of what happened during that period is that Black men, for a variety of reasons, hit on hard times, and uh, now we have fewer black men than any time in the last many decades who are able to be husbands uh, who can provide for their families even. And so that's a big part of the story. Uh, it's about recent developments. And one question that that raises, which is, is a difficult question for many, is you know what the black women owe black men. If black women are doing better economically and educationally, uh, if they have very bright futures individually, uh, is it okay for black women to form relationships with men of other races, or is that somehow a betrayal of the race uh, or turning their back on black men? Demetri, how do you respond to that? Well, I, I don't think that, that black women should be obligated to, to be with black men. I think my biggest concern about interracial dating is Sometimes we take uh, another group of men and we put them on a pedestal over black men and we say that if you date this other kind of guy, then he'll treat you better because he has more money, because he has a degree, and that's not necessarily fair to, to black guys. Um, men are pretty much men. They, they sort of behave some of the same traits across the board. And just because he's not black doesn't mean he's going to treat you better. Just because he has a degree, just because he has a great job, just because he has money, doesn't necessarily mean he's going to treat you any better. I think in this conversation you need to stay focused on the core traits of what makes a relationship work, which are communication and patience, um, love, which the first caller mentioned. Like, sometimes I think we get away from that and we need to stay very close to it. Well, aside from the other... I mean, I, let me say, I, I, Go ahead. I, I agree with all of that. Men, men are men. Oh, well, I, I think I've learned that here. I think that's what's come out of this yeah, conversation but, so but, far. But, but, but I would like to add here, though, that I mean, what makes a relationship work? I mean, a lot of times we get misty-eyed about, about love. Uh, you know, what makes the relationship work um, it, it does have a lot to do with commonalities that people share. Uh, those are commonalities in terms of values and interests, in terms of their vision for their life. And the fact that you are, and, and so those are important characteristics, and it, you know, you don't have to have someone of the same race to have those sorts of commonalities, uh, is one thing to remember. And it's also true that if you have someone who is, is in a very different educational, professional, social status space, they may have different values and interesting goals, and that can be a problem in a relationship. No, you are absolutely right, and we, in psychological services, they talk about having similar scripts, at least having similar plans for your marriage, similar goals, similar ideas of what a marriage is, and unfortunately, throughout this country, as you guys are raising, not only are men are men, and which is, uh, I was just talking to the Jersey Shore guys, I learned a little bit about that there, too, thank you for bringing it up again. But well, secondly, that we have a problem with our families in this country. We really do. And it's not just African Americans, but African Americans, as you brought up, uh, Professor Banks, your book has shed light on a very interesting subdivision of this problem that is affecting all races. And I thank you both, Demetria, Professor Banks, for bringing some, shedding some light on this. It's a topic I'd like to revisit as we go along.
Now up next, uh, questions, potpourri, more of your questions, more of my answers, 855-DOCTOR-DO-5, whatever you want to talk about, no topic taboo, we'll get to that up in the break.